Okay, the word autopsy is derived from the Greek autopsia, meaning the act of seeing for oneself. Oh, creepster. Oh, auto. I okay. love it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, auto and the, the opsy. Erotic. Like optic. Opsy. Got mm-hmm. it. Got it. In, in the United States, inspecting dead bodies to hopefully figure out how their owners died is the domain of forensic pathologists, medical examiners, and coroners. Is mm. there a difference it's between gone. those three terms? <laughs> um, or are well, they used f- interchangeably? It depends on the context. Like a, like a coroner might determine how somebody died. A forensic pathologist would be investigating a crime because forensic... Mm-hmm. And then I think the medical examiner is like a high, is like a higher up in your county, mm. like the county medical examiner, and they'll is respond like one to person. like all so the things. They'll like oversee, or yeah. they'll like if you have a tough case, or they you need like a final opinion on something, right? I think so. Okay. And I think a coroner is sort of like works maybe like under the medical examiner. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't really know for sure, but essentially they all do the same stuff. Right. Cutting up dead people and looking around. <laughs> Cutting them up. Slicing and dicing. And dicing. Mm-hmm. Slicing and dicing. Porking around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In your bean outfit. I can't look at you. What? <laughs> I'm the bride. I know. You're beautiful. <laughs> You're a beautiful I know. bean. You're beautiful. Roll that beautiful <laughs> bean footage. <laughs> For one reason or another, so it could be religious or cultural taboos, which was like pretty much the gist of it. Um, Also, a lack of reasons or just plain tradition. It's what they did. The dissection of bodies for study didn't really occur until about 300 BCE. Mm -hmm. Still a lot earlier. Before Christ, even. We're going to say (laughs) earlier? Yeah. Oh, I just. They've been poking around in there a long time. But, like, not to learn anything. Sure, 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 sure. Just for fun. It was, yeah, it was really just like, okay, they're dead. Go away now. But it makes yeah. sense. I would assume that, like, in cult- some cultural practices that were BCE, it would be customary to explore to try to get well, answers. What about, like, the Egyptians? Yeah, the mummies. But maybe yeah. they weren't exploring. They that's were mummifying. They weren't trying to determine cause of death. Correct. They weren't like researching. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Which I will get to. Okay. Um, in uh, in about 300 BCE, this is when Alexandrian physicians Herophi- Herophilus and Eris- Erastratus. I wonder if I have cumulus. A- <laughs> I wonder if I have <laughs> that was so a, dumb. <laughs> an Alexandrian physician in network on my insurance. Probably. Probably be a lot cheaper. <laughs> mm-hmm. You I'm pay gonna, them in papyrus. I'm going to fire my endocrinologist and start seeing an Alexandrian physician. You have an excess <laughs> of yellow bile. I do right Your now. humors are off. You should probably make a sacrifice to the gods about it. Your humor There's ghosts in your blood. Off. Do cocaine about it. <laughs> 36. You are really old. You are <laughs> so old. Uh, okay. So these two guys first opened them up for the purpose of studying disease. In the late second century CE, Greek physician Galen of Pergamum, mm. uh, quote, was the first to correlate the patient's symptoms, so like their complaints and the signs, like f- what can be seen and felt, s- symptoms basically, mm-hmm. with what was found upon examining the affected part of the deceased. Got so it. if someone was like, ow, my stomach hurts, and then a week later they were dead, they'd go look at the stomach and right. be like, wow, your stomach's green. There we go. <laughs> well, you died of green gevitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <I see> it. <laughs> Um, this was a significant advance that eventually led to the autopsy and broke an ancient barrier to progress in medicine. Mm-hmm. Interest in anatomy had a resurgence during the Renaissance mm-hmm. when Andreas Vesalius distinguished the normal from the abnormal. The Renaissance worker. <laughs> so, for example, <laughs> identifying an aneurysm. Mm-hmm. I'm not totally clear what an aneurysm like looks like. I think it's a blood clot in your brain. Or Isn't bleed. It? I think right. it's a bleed. So basically, they could look at a normal brain and look at an aneurysm brain and be like, huh, there we go. Blood out. Yeah. 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 Something's not right. 
Something's off. Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo ever heard of him. Also got way into dissections because I, you've probably seen like their sketches of mm-hmm. like yeah. the human the farm. Human bodies. Frederick II, who was uh, the king and emperor of like a bunch of places in the early 13th century because they were just tra- they were just trading hands like nobody's business. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a mess. It was a fucking mess. <laughs> Um, so that guy ordered that the bodies of two executed criminals be delivered every two years to the medical schools, one of which was at Salerno, for an what was called the Anatomica Publica, which Ugh, every physician like the was state o- fair was obliged to attend. It was like the state fair for, for doctors. The doctors. Yeah. yeah, you had to go. Mm-hmm. You had to watch these autopsies. That's wild. That's amazing. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I guess I don't talk about the Egyptians. I thought I did, but you're exactly right, Kenyon. They took mm-hmm. they took the organs out just to preserve them because that was just part of their like desiccation, yeah, you know, religious their, philosophy. Their, yeah, their religion death practices. or just like their yeah, was, their yeah, cultural religion practice. that they they were mummifying these people because they thought that they would have a second life in the afterlife and they mm-hmm. had to be mm-hmm. prepared for that. Would you call That's that a religion, That's why I'm being though? buried with all my shit. It, either way, it was, it was part of cultural in some way, shape, or yeah. form. Yeah, but it was not for the purpose of Research. digging around in the guts. And But I don't think, like, everyone got mummified. I think it was just, mm-hmm. like, pharaohs or, like, rich, rich people. people. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, the first forensic autopsy is thought to have been completed by a magistrate in Bologna, Bologna, oh, in 1302. So Antonio Benevieni, Benderes, <laughs> Benveld on that, a 15th century Florentine physician. I'm so hungry. Florentine, <laughs> Bologna. Mm-hmm. You had a prime rib for I lunch. haven't eaten since my snack after the prime rib. <laughs> 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 it's quarter to six. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten anything since second lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, it's about time for first dinner. So, oh my God. First dinner. <laughs> Truly. You guys don't judge me, but never. You're pregnant. I love this era. <laughs> I've gotten way. I into- hope you keep all of these habits. Me too. For real. I've gotten way into hot pockets lately. Yeah. <laughs> yum. <laughs> Yo, why did we ever stop eating hot pockets? A friend of ours, uh, <laughs> uh, Dave's wifey, it was like obsessed with Uncrustables, and she would take a frozen one yeah. when she was pregnant. She would take a frozen one out at night and put it under her pillow because she <laughs> knew she'd wake up at like three in the morning needing an Uncrustable, and it would just be defying a little bit. They're good. By three a.m., she's got a mostly not frozen but still cold <laughs> Uncrustable <laughs> under her pillow that she could just roll over and eat and then go back to bed. That's the genius. Uncrustable fairy left it. It's fucking brilliant. I'm like, I'm just going to start doing that. I have a drawer of candy next to my bed, but I've had that for years. But now you're actually using it. Uh, yeah. Does it I need to be so refilled? Jealous. Do you need to text Corey and tell him to go to the store? I have two things of candy right here. I have my leftover Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> and my sweet tarts. <laughs> you guys, this is unreal. This yeah, is this, like we're so like weird. processing because Lucy, this is just so not Lucy. It's great. Like we know you love you like Skittles, but this is like you're not like a candy all the time sweets or dessert <laughs> no, person at all. Never. This is so bizarre. I've never ordered dessert in my life. I, I've never seen you do it. I've only <laughs> ever seen you like arrange dessert for your wedding night. Yeah, that was it. I'm and so I don't excited think you for even your Trace it. Light Chase cake. I did not eat dessert at my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I even taste tested them. I let Corey do it. Well, you'll have two at mine. You'll have Trace Light Chase, and then you also have uh, Brazilian chocolate cupcakes with raspberry frosting. Oh, say it again. Brazilian chocolate cupcakes with raspberry frosting. Fuck me up. <laughs> I'm so excited. Just slide off her chair. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh God, Kenyon, are you there? I'm melting. Oh, I'm okay. so hot. <laughs> okay, here you we go. You can't see me, but the Mm-mm. camera can, and my <laughs> cheeks are bright red. I'm I love just this for you. So right. fucking hot. We're plowing through. Okay. 
okay, the Florentine physician um, Antonio Benivieni carried out 15 autopsies explicitly to determine the cause of death and significantly correlated some of his findings with prior symptoms in the deceased. Mm. Nice. Théophile Bonnet of Geneva, uh, who lived in the mid-1600s, basically recorded the observations made in 3,000 different autopsies in books. Dang. So for a long time, all we really knew from autopsies uh, the, all we really knew about like s- symptoms versus pathologies in a dead body were from books. Sure, from these from these people. So he like collated all of that information because it had just been um, like loose. The n- the next guy kind of okay collated them. Uh, I think this Theophile guy collected all the autops collected all the observations and then wrote those into books mm-hmm. and then another guy collated a bunch of books mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so many specific specific clinical and pathologic entities were then defined by various observers so people are adding their own notes it's it's mm-hmm. a bit it's a long comments like a reddit list mm-hmm. thus opening the door to modern practice it's in not seven a list it's a thread but yeah whatever you know what I mean. <laughs> in 1761, Giovanni Morgani, Morga, Morgana, <laughs> aka the father of modern pathologies. Everyone's a fucking parent of something. I feel like every episode we've done lately, mm-hmm. it's the mother of this and the father of that. Yep. Mother of Pearl. Yikes. Um, You're so right. that guy. I'm so high. <laughs> so that guy described what could be seen inside the body with the naked eye. So I think he was kind of the one who said it was an autopsy. So the see, seeing it for yourself thing. So he wrote a mega important work called The Seats and Causes of Diseases Investigated by Anatomy. Ooh. Which was a description of the appearances found by postmortem examinations of almost 700 cases. Snap. in which In which he attempted to correlate the findings after death with the clinical picture in life. Okay. It is, so to Kenyon's question. To answer Kenyon's question, it essentially replaced all of those books that at that point pretty much just compared commentaries, so all those threads. Mm-hmm. He wrote this big book or this big collection of books mm. that was like, this is what... The comprehensive guides yes. yeah, if you see of our time. this, 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 and this, mm-hmm. and then they die, you're probably gonna, they're probably going to look like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like consolidating all these observations that... Pe- different people made at different times that said the same fucking thing. Mm-hmm. So um, if then in the late 18th century, we get the different systems and tissues. In the 19th century, we get microscopes and the cellular doctrine. So like mm. what a cell is. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being alive when they invented the microscope <laughs> and <laughs> realizing when all... When they invented the internet. I know, but the internet <laughs> is Can different you imagine? from the discovery <laughs> of all these tiny little things on. that are all <laughs> over your body and like inside you. It'd be all weird. These little cells and moving little creatures. That would fucking freak. That's what I mean. That would fucking freak me out. Mm-hmm. The episode we talked about X rays. That first X ray of someone's hand. Yes, mm-hmm. that'd be so, so fucking weird. It's just mm-hmm. weird. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Um, so plus we get a widened focus on physiologic pathology. So like the functioning of the organism as a whole and not just not just pathological anatomy, which would be the study of the structure of the diseased tissue. Mm-hmm. So we're not just talking about shit that went wrong. We're looking at how everything works when it's healthy mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. which brings us to the autopsy of today. And here is my favorite part. And yes, I have screenshots on the drive, which will be on the blog. On Wait. the Aust- on the Australian <laughs> Museum's website, you can perform a fucking virtual autopsy. The fuck? Oh, oh! It is so cool. Uh, don't don't look at the face flaps. That's too different. late. <laughs> what? Somebody the door is open. Would have been appreciated. It's an there's, autopsy episode. Yeah, there's Still. a handful of pictures on here that. Will not be on the blog. No, they're just for you. Cannot be on the blog. The eye cavities. So the well, yeah, we've been to Body Worlds. Didn't we go to Body Worlds together? 
No, no I, went I went with that Joker. boy that I kept dating yeah, because he had, he had tickets. Ticket. ticket. That's oh, the right. ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's nothing you don't see a body worlds um anyway also this virtual autopsy portal is wine and crime colors <laughs> which <laughs> i was attracted to oh my god so i spent an hour doing this virtual autopsy loved it i actually did it, did it twice to show Corey the second time oh. so here are the steps as i took them the first step to an actual autopsy and a virtual autopsy is a thorough external examination of the body for any abnormality or trauma. The body is measured and weighed and all results are recorded and physical characteristics are listed. So if you had like a tattoo or something, they Mm -hmm. would write all that stuff down. Or like a scar. Mm Mm-hmm. The forensic pathologist will look for any valuable forensic evidence under the fingernails, dead skin, Mm -hmm. etc., and test for rigor mortis, to determine time of death by bending the elbow and the knees and opening the jaw to see whether they move or not. Okay. Mm. Because they won't be bendy if you've been dead for a certain amount of time. Yeah, oh, it'll be hard so you'll to, physically like that's barely why be sometimes able to move it's, it. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, if people are like shoving their murder victim in a suitcase, if it's been mm-hmm. too long, mm-hmm. they, they can't crack, do it. They got to crack some stuff instead of bending it. Or they yep. end up cutting them up and packing them into the suitcase. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. They'll also look at the clothes, what the person was wearing. They'll notice any odd smells. Almond. Mm. Bean. Or like, you know. <laughs> bean. Baked bean. <laughs> Brown sugar baked bean. A forensic pathologist like, she smelled a lot like baked beans and your family identifiers will be like, that's just, that's It's don't. Amanda. That's it's just Amanda. her. <laughs> that's just She our died gal. doing what she loved. She loved. Bathing in beans. Beans. <laughs> Um, uh, they will also check for lividity to determine the time of death and also clues about the position of the body so as we know lividity is the pooling of the blood under the skin Mm -hmm. so if you're lying on your back for a while your back will be kind of purplish Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next we make the Y incision Mm -hmm. it goes (laughs) under the breasts and then down the belly okay so a rubber block is placed under the torso to prop up the rib cage. I did this last night with a squishmallow because my back hurt. It was very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some yeah. They sell <laughs> those. <laughs> they sell those for like Pilates. <laughs> yeah. Comfy. Just, just a medical examiner <laughs> rolling up a squishmallow. <laughs> <laughs> to prop up the no, rib cage. No. <laughs> it's like wrapped in a plastic bag so it doesn't stain. So the arms of the Y extend from the front of each shoulder to the bottom of the breastbone. We go under the boobs. Mm-hmm. The Y, the tail of the Y extends from the sternum down to the pubic bone and typically deviates to avoid the navel. It goes around yeah. your belly button. Why? Just because? Probably because your belly button is just a big bundle of nerves. It's probably dense right there. And pro- yeah, it's probably annoying to cut. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the incision is very deep, extending to the rib cage on the chest and completely through the abdominal wall below that. Mm-hmm. And Kenyon knows all about that. I sure do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine did not go quite up to the belly button, but it got real close. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just uh, just shy of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Your yep. abdominal wall. My Ugh. abdominal Ooh. wall. I had a... Sonia's birth was traumatic. It was mm-hmm. a fun time. And something weird happened that never happens or something with my abdominal wall like froze or mm-hmm. something. She got stuck and behind she got it. stuck. <laughs> the one crunch you've ever done in your yeah. life was yeah. during childbirth. Yeah. <laughs> oh I God. had a doctor come to the my room afterwards and ask me like if I did a lot of if I worked out a lot. Not a doctor that was in the room obviously. That asked me if I like <laughs> did a lot of like athletics or something and i was like clearly ah! no yeah <laughs> uh, i avoided at all costs that's so weird so weird who yeah anyway who knows Love anyway yeah. i have a gnarly scar it's fine it's okay so the skin from this cut is then peeled back so this way on the gut and then the top flap is pulled 
up over the face. My what, medical so examiner what do they do with the me. Do this they pin the boobs up so they can get at? The boobs would be part of that upper flap. They just kind of go up I over your shoulders. <gasps> wow. Look at this. I think there's a song about that. Yep, there <laughs> is. <laughs> Did you throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Yeah. Um, all, another thing I found interesting about this, it pointed it out, but it's true. Whether you are dealing with the with the organs in your abdomen or like at the middle part of your body or when they take out your brain, the, f- the face is covered almost for every step of the autopsy. I have to imagine. That would help. That would help, yeah. Well, it's covered with your own skin, so it's not like to be less gory. But still, it but just, still serves a purpose of being less creepy while no one's just watching you it's definitely not why they do it but it's probably helpful yeah then when they take take your brain out they can watch you from the other way (laughs) inside cool Uh, because your brain's out so you can look through the hole oh no that's like it's like you're watching it's like your eyeballs flipped back and watched out through the back of your head uh, because your brain's gone Uh okay look at the pictures no i'm good Following the Y incision, the ribs are sawn off to expose the internal organs. They just take this chunk off. The sternal plate or anterior chest wall is cut away. So I guess just this to expose the organs underneath like your lungs. Each pathology service has its own autopsy technique, but the most common way to remove the organs is known as the Rokitansky method and this was named after 19th century Austrian pathologist Karl Rokitansky, who perf- allegedly re- performed 30,000 autopsies and is said to have supervised another 70,000. Who so would have the time many. to do that? That's so Yeah, many. you'd have to only do that constantly for the rest of for your life, decades. I feel like. Yeah, so he was probably churching it up, but probably still a lot of autopsies. I'm doing wow. the math on that. So the Rokitansky method involves removing all of the body organs at the same time. So the heart, the lungs, liver, kidneys, spleen, et cetera, are removed in one block. And then they're kind of separated and then dissected on a separate autopsy table. Okay. So this is to keep the connective tissues intact. To also be examined if needed or? Yeah. Yeah. Or, okay. like, if they remove them all so they were able to kind of look at it separately, they might find something weird about how they were stuck together. Okay. Potentially. Um, the organs are then dissected one by one. And during the examination, the forensic pathologist will collect small samples of tissue for further examination under the microscope. He Got would it. have been really fucking busy because that is. Assuming his career was 40 years, like he started when he was 30 and he ended when he was 70. Mm-hmm. We'll give him a long life. Okay. If he did 70,000 and he worked every single day of the year, no holidays, no breaks, no sick days, nothing. It's still almost five autopsies a day. Jesus uh, Christ. Well, for the 70,000? Yeah. Because this says he performed 30, but then oversaw another 70,000. Oversa- that can't be right. It them, cannot. But that can't be right. That's crazy. Unless but. he was observing in a room and all his students were doing them at the same time. That's what I mean. I think maybe that it's like multiple cadavers at once in a, like a classroom setting. So what would it be if he performed 30,000 autopsies? He will still have had to have done like to at least two a day. All right, let's do this. Say that his career was still 40 years, which I think is quite generous. Yeah. <laughs> and Especially in the 19th century. There are 260 working days a year nowadays. So I feel like we should do it by working days a year. So, um, 260 times 40. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Is 10,400, so 30,000 divided by 10,400. Almost three a day. Damn. For every working day for 40 years. No. Jeez. 2.88. He must have reeked. 
I'm sorry, but he must have been a real creepazoid. There's yeah. no way he wasn't creepy as fuck and yeah. didn't just <laughs> reek like a three day old room temp prime rib at all times. <laughs> Yum. You Don't know. Don't ruin prime rib for her. She can't. Listen, I can't. Yeah, we're past that. He's going to be pale. He's going to be pruney and wrinkly so from his pale. hands being in gloves all the time. Yes. Oh, no, they didn't wear gloves. They didn't give a shit. Oh, 19th just, century. They didn't even wash their fucking hands. He was elbows deep in that shit. And then he went home he's and fingered pruny. his wife. Yeah. Hands yeah. are always wet. <laughs> oh, God, I hope he wasn't married. I hope he was not married. <laughs> Smells like formaldehyde. They, like, literally didn't wash their hands in between. <sighs> well, they're already dead. Hopefully he washed his hands before he went home. Anyway, to remove the brain, <laughs> an incision is made. <laughs> <laughs> this is made on hinge. <laughs> well, I sure hope you liked that clip. If you did like that clip, make sure you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, leaving us a nice review, and joining us on Patreon for even more video content, audio content, salacious content all around. Come join us. Treat yourself. <laughs>